Okay, so these saws managed to find themselves underwater, and I want to use them again, so I'm going to try and store them. Uh, we're going to start with that one there on the left, and that's what this video is about. The teardown I'm not going to bother you with too much, because what we're doing is taking out a couple of screws and pulling the handle off. Uh, if the screws get stuck, you could use uh, a scraper or like a putty knife to try and get underneath them without damaging the handle. If you're trying to restore a saw the way you're keeping the handle, this handle here I got to toss out and remake. So keep an eye out for that video. Uh, that'll be another one where I actually make the new handle for this particular saw. Um, what I saw me start out doing was just using uh, a product called Simple Green. It's just a cleaner. Uh, it's a really mild cleaner. Uh, I used that to just wash off any of the loose dirt and stuff on the saw. Um, from there, I'm doing this uh, on my table saw because it's super flat, so I don't have to worry about messing up the saw blade or you know putting any kind of kinks or creases or dealing with that. Um, what I did is I clamped it down. That's a cutting mat that it's on. The cutting mat gives a little bit of traction and I don't have to worry about what happens. I'm still using the Simple Green just kind of as a lubricant and I'm using a razor blade as a card scraper. You just kind of hold it, give it a little bit of a bend and gently work it across the length of the saw going from heel to toe. So from back to front or front to back. Just don't go from top to bottom with it. Um, and um, I'm trying to scrape off all the corrosion that's taken place on this saw blade. Do it gently. If you get really aggressive with it, you can gouge the, the saw steel and you want to avoid doing that. If you're not comfortable with this, this is pretty much the fastest way I've found to, to do this. If you're not comfortable with doing this, just start with sandpaper. Um, so once that's done, we cleaned up the blade a little bit that way. Next, I'm using WD-40 uh, penetrating oil. Um, and again, I'm using that just as a lubricant. And I'm going to work my way through grits of wet dry sandpaper. And I'm using a sanding block because I don't want to gouge. I want this to move smoothly across the flat surface of the saw. Um, I'm starting with 400 grit and I'll work my way up 800, 1200. Uh, I don't see any need to go higher than that. Um, you know, but hey, if you want to, go for it. Uh, the, the thing to remember, uh, at least in this video for what I'm doing, is that this is a working saw. This is not uh, an antique showpiece, you know, collector's item restoration. This is a saw that I've used for years. This was my grandfather's saw. Uh, and it wound up uh, under ocean water for a couple of days, so I want to bring it back. I want to make it usable again. Um, it's been sitting there for a couple of years, and, and I finally have the opportunity to get back into it. Um, uh, what you just saw me there is uh, just switching grips, going from 400 to 800. Um, but anyway, I want to make this all usable again, so. Uh, There's going to be another video after this on the setting the teeth and sharpening the saw. This is just about the tear down and clean up. I don't know if I can do that on the other side. Reason being, that's what the saw started out like. So we're making the right progress in terms of the steel. However, we've got all of the etching on this side. I don't want to remove that. This is barely legible if I could stop before I get the etching down that'd be great but this is a Sandvik number 270 it's five and a half teeth per inch you'll usually find that back here um, I'm gonna see what happens you know there's really no saving this saw to make it a collector's item. I don't think we can do that kind of restoration to it because all the rust has been removed and we're left with some some kind of an etching that took place in the steel and I don't see any other way to get that out. Chemicals for sure are going to ruin the etching so let's just hope that I can do this 
Believe it or not, that'll actually help hold it in place. And I'm going to start with the 400. Right on that, on this. And uh, yeah, pray for me. Let's see what happens. Okay, so what's the end result of all that? We've got a fairly clean saw plate. Now, based on how bad this was when we started, I think this is a great place to stop. We could take it a little bit further. It's really just going to be more for the look of the saw, not so much performance affecting. Um, everything's nice and clean. Some of these water spots we're just not going to be able to get rid of. This was underwater uh, due to Sandy for about two days before it got pulled out, dried off, and given a coat of WD-40. So the important thing is, because this is a working saw, this is something that I'm going to use on a regular basis. Uh, the teeth are in great shape. Nothing got broken about the teeth. Even the back teeth, which you tend to have problems on older saws. I mean, this saw is probably from somewhere in the 40s, is the, my best estimation on it. Uh, probably in the 1940s, this saw was put together. This is a Sandvik. Um, you could see the one mark here from the handle. If this had been rehandled, uh, you likely would have seen a secondary mark, something lighter from the original handle. Um, so that was the handle that we pulled off of this earlier was the original handle from this saw. Uh, nothing we could do about it. We have to make a new one because it is a, a laminated wood. It wasn't made out of a solid piece of wood and just from being underwater it all came apart. So this is where I could take the plate to. Now we'll take a quick look at the other side because I want you to see how much worse this side is. I could have worked this side to get it the same as the side that I just showed you. This is where I decided to stop for two reasons. One, uh, because again, this is gonna be a working saw and none of this marking is gonna affect how this saw cuts. So I'm okay with that. I would like to have had the plate a lot cleaner, but here's the thing. We're still able to see a lot of the etching on here. This is the main etching right here, where you can see it says, it's a little tough to see that it says Sandvik up here, taper ground, uh, the, the whole width, so on and so forth. And you can see there's the fish from Sandvik. Move over a little bit to the middle, there's the number 270, that's the model of this saw. And then the secondary uh, main etching that was on this blade. And if I keep going to try and make this nice and bright and clean, I'm going to lose this entire etching. Right now, it's legible. It's a mess, but it's legible. I like it. I want to be able to look at this in 20 years and be like, oh, yeah, this is a Sandvik number 270. Right now, if I clean all that off, I'm not going to be able to do that. And that's why I said we're good enough, and I'm going to leave that where it is. Also, if you're not aware of it, on the back corner of most saws, right about here, uh, let me see if I can get it in the light a little better. That's telling me the size of the saw. Okay, so that's a five and a half. It's stamped into the steel of the blade. That's telling me I've got five and a half points per inch. Okay, so five and a half teeth per inch. This is a fairly large tooth rip saw. Um, again, all the teeth are in great shape. I'm gonna check the set on them and sharpen this saw. That'll be in another video, but that's it. That's the end of the cleanup.